with Mike and Kim, bringing local music, news and interviews. On the Zeds 91.1. Local band Grey Hearts Red have been working hard over the last few years in readiness to release their first album, Whatever I Have Left, which is out tomorrow, being November 3rd. Last week, I had the chance to catch up with Andrew from the band and had a chat about music, screaming, and the new album. You're listening to 5 Triple Z. This is your local, and this is Grey Hearts Red. listening to the local on the zeds there you heard a track from greyheart red's new album that was called vygotsky we do have andrew from greyheart's red welcome to the local what it is now yeah thank you i really appreciate um, being on anytime you are always welcome it's been a while since we've had a chat so for Mm. those who don't know who is greyheart's red and how did you guys evolve into what you are now I think the boys started first. So there was three of them at that stage, Ryan, Jared, and Tim. They started writing some stuff, which was amazing. And I was a first time dad dealing with not even a one-year-old, I think. And they started sending me these tracks and I was like listening to them going, oh, it's so good. And they weren't really looking for a singer just yet, but I could already sense that there was something really great about what they were producing. And so eventually, um, probably it was about a year or so later, I started just putting some stuff together um, and sent it to Ryan and we kind of went from there. Yeah. So we've been playing gigs. But just fairly recently, in the last couple of years, uh, Tim left because he was going to be a dad as well, yep. um, which made sense for us. And we didn't really want to replace him. It's really hard to find a great 
guitarist and somebody that would fit. And so we worked with just what we had. Jared's been amazing picking up the guitar and the bass for us. So he's playing both of those. So we've become more of a um, a studio band yeah. um, at the moment and just enjoying that. So what sort of music did you grow up listening to? So, yeah, for me, it was Soundgarden. So Super Unknown was my first tape, and I'm pretty proud of that. And uh, I guess I was also listening to quite a bit of punk stuff as well, but Smash was my favorite album. Um, I was just actually listening to it the other day and just thinking how great this album is and still speaks a lot as well. So those were the two kind of sounds that I was really immersing myself in, especially as a teenager. But I got to say, I was surrounded by lots of different music and I love all sorts of different music. I go from bluegrass one time to just electronic music and then all over the place and I had friends sending me mixtapes all the time so I listened to everything from pop to opera really as I was growing up so opera was my dad he would play that really loud to get me up in the morning so um yeah (laughs) but um yeah I was always surrounded by music so and I have a great appreciation for the lot of it I guess so I'm a bit eclectic when it comes to recording and it's just one of those things I really enjoy music in all the different areas so So you do have this new album coming out whatever Mm. I have left you've been dropping things in sequence was there sort of any reason behind that or you just wanted to bring it out slowly in some ways, I, I think we we picked out the songs that we wanted to go with. There was a lot of thought in which ones we would send out first and the order. So there was a lot of thought into why we would do that one and then that one and then that one. But I think it was to do with where we felt personally they would sit and what would grab interest as well as we wanted to do kind of like release the tracks fortnightly so that because we know that when you release a track, it's only got a lifespan of about a fortnight before it disappears into the unknown again. So the idea was that if we did that four times, that we could keep the momentum going for the album. Yeah. So up next, we're going to play Wolves. What was behind that track being created? Wolves, I guess for me, uh, for the boys as well, I think we were looking at a, a track that would actually move and follow a theme that would go into Wolves Part 2. Yep. Um, so we found a sound that we were looking for, and so we went from there. I think the message in, in Wolves is about being careful of things that distract you or take you off the path or people who... Um, who speak lies, I guess, uh, Mm -hmm. more than anything else. It's a powerful song in the sense of speaking about the things that can lose your sense of momentum and take you away from what's most important. So, yeah.
listening to the local on the Zeds. It was another track from Greyheart Red's new album. It's a track called Wolves. We are still speaking with Andrew from the band. Did you, you've uh, actually I'm, been quite busy yourself personally for the last, yeah, the last yeah, few well, years. Yeah, well, I've done different things. And I think that's it, partly just to ha- take a break from Greyheart's Red as well and to come back at it in a different way. It's just uh, uh, working with the guys is a real privilege and a joy. But it's also you have to make compromises. But when you're writing music for yourself, you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's a bit of freedom in in um, doing my own stuff occasionally as well. Thinking about the songs, what is the general process for songwriting for you guys? Yeah. Okay. So this will probably be different than a lot of other groups. So the way that it works is that Ryan writes the drums first. So he will write the entire track. Uh, the way that he thinks it should go. Um, He's really one for structure of a song and not to have just like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Like he's very interested in um, trying to mix it up a bit. So he wrote the whole drum track, not knowing what was going to happen next. And then he'd send it on to Jared and Jared would put the bass and the guitar on it. And then in the end, once those tracks were all done, then it was left up to me to find a vocal track somewhere in there. In some ways, we're responding to each other. So Ryan writes the drums and Jared responds to those drums. And then I respond to both of them in what I write as well. So particularly when I'm listening to the song and for the track that they've played, I'm listening for what it's already telling me. Yep. And so I'm really just listening for the feel, what the kind of emotion is in there, because they do speak for themselves in a lot of ways. And so it was just writing and singing that complements what they've done. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And for us, it's really interesting because it's a great uh, working way of doing it. So at the moment, we're releasing this album, but we actually already have another album ready. But I haven't recorded the vocals for it yet. So the boys have actually finished a second album uh, already um, and they were kind of waiting on me to finish that off with the uh, vocals so yeah so it's a great uh, way that we've been able to work and find a rhythm that works yeah. for us. So what about with the names of the songs then is that sort of down to you or is that sort of a group effort I, again? I guess like I do write the songs actually the lyrics go past the boys anyway. Yep. Ryan contributes with the drums and Jared with guitar and bass and me with the vocals at the same time we we speak to each other about what we like and what we dislike and there's changes and moves that we make so that we're all happy with it um i think for us as a band we've always had that as a core thing like we'd never release a song if one of us wasn't happy with it um and that's caused some pain (laughs) and tragedy with some songs that will never be released but um i think in general it's made us stronger and also in the sense that when we release it we really believe in what we've made is something that we're really proud of for example vygotsky where did that name come from vygotsky yeah so vygotsky was interesting um I wrote this song and it was very much about the inner voice and what we're always telling ourselves at times and kind of how that keeps us in some ways from the things that we ought to be doing or that we could do, but we tell ourselves that we can't. And after I'd written all of that, um, we're trying to find a a name for uh, the song and there's a psychologist named Vygotsky and, and he has written a lot about the inner voice particularly um, for children and what uh, as we grow up as well and there's a lot of really interesting stuff that he's written about and so I just happened to find it and start reading that and thought actually well that's what I'm kind of talking about here so yeah. it, it's a great way of doing it and I guess you know like when you look at like metal and heavy rock kind of bands they always choose obscure kind of names for albums as well as for songs and say so thought, oh, well, that that would work there. And the boys were keen, so we went with that. We're going to play A Rose next, which we played mm. last week on the show. So what can you say about this track? Yeah, well, um, it's an interesting one. It was written in the height of uh, COVID where we were locked away and it wasn't meant to be anything about the rules or what happened and people getting locked 
away. <laughs> but for us, it has more meaning than that. It's It was uh, a lot to do with the way that we get trapped in ourselves. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in a way, Vygotsky was about the, the way the inner voice telling us things but it's also that outside voices who say you're probably not good enough or those voices that have kind of want to put you in a box and say um yeah that's very much what a raise is all about but we all say in in all our songs as well there's this idea or this desire that other people will be able to draw things from it that maybe even we didn't think of um so while i'm saying those things we also want to be open to the fact of other people picking their own meaning from it as well so listening to the local on the zeds there you heard a track from greyhound red's new album that is due for release tomorrow that track was called erase and we are still speaking with andrew from the band i can tell you something that's on this album that you may not have picked up but jared doesn't actually do any of the screams on this album Mm. that's me 
situation that came out was that I was recording it and I was like, oh, that's the bit that Jared would do. And so I just recorded the bit of the screen part that I thought it would sound something like this. And I found a few um, bits and pieces that I could make it sound pretty good. And I sent it out and um, I was like, so Jared, you just record that bit when you get to it. And he was like, why? I was like, what do you mean why? He goes, it's fine the way it is. It's great. Nice. It's like, and so it's just like, why would I need to re-record that? So I was like, oh, okay. So, and we just did the whole album that way. And he yeah. said to me, like, look, I've, I'm doing the guitar and the bass already. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's enough for me. Like, yeah. you know, Excellent. there's a little bit of the trade as well. That's There's ways of being able to do it, which doesn't destroy my voice. So I was being very careful about the way that I was uh, recording it as well. I guess one of the hardest things about this album is that it's immensely personal. Mm-hmm. I didn't hide away lyrically at all uh, in what I wrote. Um, and I think one of the reasons why I did that was because I wanted people to connect with where what I was at as well as for them to recognize that, you know, there's other people who feel the same way. Yeah. And I think for me, like going back to that original question about um, the music that I listened to, Soundgarden, those lyrics spoke to me in such a huge way when I was growing up as a kid. Um, And it made me feel as though that um, Chris Cornell felt the same sort of feelings as I did and it was going to be okay. So I think that was kind of what helped me through a bit as well. So, But this album for me is immensely personal and I there was a little bit of reluctance in wanting to release it for that reason. So as the album is officially being released tomorrow, whatever I mm. have left, what is next? What do you, yeah, what do you well, want next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. It, it's interesting. I think this has really been a, a process of discovery for us, of finding a new sound, a heavier sound, but something that um, is balanced so that you can hear all the instruments um, and you can see the interplay between them. Um, and I'm talking about voice as well as an instrument. I think that this next album kind of goes deeper into that. Uh, so what we're writing at the moment, we're putting together probably follows on from there. So I wouldn't say it's more of the same. I think it's just this more developing this idea of what we've been putting together. If there was one thing you wanted people to take from your music, what would it be? Just that I hope that it's thought provoking from my perspective. I hope that it gets them thinking really like uh, when we've talked together as a band, we've always talked about the fact that we just want to be heard, not so much to be appreciated, but I I guess in the sense of we feel as though that we're doing something significant together, that we have a message to share, but the deeper part of it is just the creative want and desire to produce something uh, for other people to hear and uh, for them to be moved by it. I think for me, that's the heart behind everything that we do. It's something that comes out of us. It's, uh, it's like our children. <laughs> and, and in a lot of ways, we just want to share uh, share the joy that we have in creating together and hope that other people really enjoy it as well. Yeah. well I'm going to say I've been enjoying listening to it as you've been sending me sneak peeks for the past weeks. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Tomorrow is the launch of whatever I have left. Was there anything you wanted to let the listeners know about before we go to Wolves Part 2? Just to say thanks for the love that we've received so far, for the songs that we've put out so far. We definitely appreciated that, and I guess that's the heart of what we do. So uh, we hope you enjoy Wolves Part 2, and we hope you go and listen to the album or even buy it. That would be amazing. you 
walk the path ahead of you. I draw the line of fire. I stand before and behind you. I alone for all of time. My name's Hayley. You're listening to the local on the Zeds. 